Hi guys, Kim here at Olive City Homestead. It is mid-May and the fruit is ripening. Right behind me, I have the pomegranate tree and it is looking wonderful, which it should be since it is a wonderful pomegranate tree. I've also got other fruit I wanna share with you. So come with me and let's take a look. A lot of my trees are only a few years old, so I've been both really pleased and surprised at the fruit I've been getting already this year. So stick around because Maybe you'll discover a fruit you haven't even heard of yet, or one that you know you just have to grow too. So this is the view from inside my pomegranate tree cage, and you can see a few of my olive trees in my olive orchard as the sun is setting over there in the west. Why am I in a cage? Why is the pomegranate tree in a cage? I'll tell you why. Because of that guy right there and Hello, that guy right there. Uh-huh. This is cocoa and toffee. And if this cage wasn't here, then this beautiful tree would not be here either because they would eat it. They would love to eat it. Instead, I'm going to get to eat it. My kids and I, do you see those pomegranates? I don't know if you've ever seen a pomegranate tree growing, but the blossoms start off this bright, rich red and then out of the blossom comes the pomegranate. This tree is full of young pomegranates and really of all sizes. And I do need to weed around this tree, that's true. <laughs> pomegranate trees tend to grow as a bush. I could cut off a lot of these branches and try to groom it more as a tree, but really they don't have one central trunk they have lots of um, branches that come up from the bottom and they root really easily. You can actually grow pomegranates from seed and they stay true. I have several trees. One I won at a nursery. I was there for a talk on citrus trees and won a little pomegranate tree. It was another wonderful one. That variety is my favorite. It was a really tiny seedling though. And I've had it for two years now, and I'll show it to you later, and you can see just how much it's grown in two years. Here we've got another little blossom, not even beginning to open yet, and another one underneath there. So this is a tree that puts on its fruit gradually, and that's nice because then you have a uh, harvest gradually. And I can't wait to harvest these. When I do, I will definitely share it with you and show you several different things you can do with pomegranates. Last year I made a pomegranate spritzer video and those are delicious, but there are a lot of things you can make with pomegranates as well as of course eating them fresh. So yeah, I'm really happy to see how much fruit this is putting on this year. I'd say there's at least 25 already good size, bigger than golf balls. And I have a lot more blossoms that are opening and starting to be pollinated and grow into little pomegranates themselves. Look what I see. I see cherries hiding amidst the leaves. And yes, they're everywhere. And yes, the birds have started to get some. So I really need to start searching them out now. And harvesting them before the birds get them all. This is the first year I've had cherries. Well, last year I got a few because I didn't catch them early enough. But this tree's only three years old in my orchard. So I'm really pleased. Now I'm going to harvest some. So see this cherry? I'm gonna eat it. I might be weird, but look, a bird got a little part of it. So what? The rest of it is perfect, and I'm not going to let that go to waste. These things are, oh, they're so good. Yep, I'm going to eat it. Mmm, totally worth it. I'll share with the birds. <laughs> and look, there's just so much more that I can get that the birds haven't got yet, because I've been keeping an eye on this tree every day watching it, pushing it, wanting to, them to get a little riper, but not so ripe that the birds totally decimate it. And I, I'm happy because I finally judged it just right. 
talk about the perfect cherries. I mean, look at that. It's just so good. I'm so happy with the results this year. I know it doesn't look like much, but actually it's probably about a pound and a half, two pounds of cherries. Yeah, I'd say two pounds maybe. And they're absolutely scrumptious. And being it's such a young tree, I'm super happy. Also being that we really don't get that many chill hours. And so a lot of people say you can't go grow cherries around here, but grow them we did. I actually grow Stella's and Rainier's and what's the third one? I grow three varieties that cross pollinate and have low chill hours, relatively speaking. And I'm gonna have to look that up because I can't remember off the top of my head. And here are the Rainier's. They're more of a uh, yellow red cherry and super sweet. And uh, looks like I've got quite a few on here. I didn't have any of these last year. So I'm very happy to see that this year I've got some. Well, another couple of pounds of cherries. And I left some on the tree to ripen more, but these I've tested about 20 but that birds got just a tiny bit of, and they are so sweet, these Rainiers. And I'm so happy that they actually grew. I wasn't sure about Rainiers, but they did. And nice harvest this mid-May day. One I wasn't expecting, but one which I appreciate, and my kids will too. Look, it's my first sunflower, an autumn beauty. So pretty and lots more to come. Hey guys, you know tomatoes are a fruit, right? This is my first tomato harvest of the year in mid-May, and I've got some more ripening right there in my grow bag. First time I've grown in grow bags, and this is on my uh, back patio in the filtered sun, so doing pretty well. So this is my big fruiting mulberry tree. It is currently about 40 feet tall. Every few years I top it and bring it down to 20 feet, but it just keeps growing up there. I top it because I don't want as much shade as that tall of a tree gives me. But something else weird I've done is I've let the branches grow down almost to the ground, actually on the ground, some of them. And that's so I can harvest the mulberries. So looking up into the tree, the black things you see, those black fruits are ripe. If you get up close, you'll see it's loaded. They start off white, they turn light pink and then dark pink, and eventually they turn black. Now I have a bunch of small ones on here, like this big, about an inch and a quarter, but usually they get to be two and a half, three inches long, and they are deliciously sweet. And this tree is just loaded with them. I've left plenty for the birds, but I can come out here and harvest for hours and have baskets and baskets of them if I want. <laughs> and they make the most delicious fresh fruit snack, but also the best cobbler ever. I also think they'd be great in a homemade ice cream, but most of them end up in our mouths. Mm. Also, they would make a great dye, as you can see. Oh, look, there's one ready to go. And they don't have seeds. Well, obviously they have seeds, but they don't have any noticeable seeds. They're not like um, blackberries or um, I'm trying to think of another fruit that's full of seeds. I can't think of one right now, but these aren't. You can just slide these right off the stem and they're just delicious. I highly recommend uh, a mulberry tree. Just put it somewhere where you don't care about uh, the ones that drop because a lot do drop. The birds will eat them, but they do stay in the ground. If you say you had it over cement or a driveway, that would be very bad. <laughs> but just on a grass or dirt, it's totally fine. And in just about two seconds, I've got five or six here to plop in my mouth and enjoy. Oh, look what I see. That's a kumquat. 
So kumquats were a surprise to me. I never had had one before I got a tree, actually two trees, and I discovered I love them. You just pop these in your mouth, skin and all. And, oh, they're like a sweet tart orange, but the skin is edible. It's super thin and soft, really hardly any chewiness to it all. Mine are seedless, or if there are seeds, they're so tiny, you just don't even notice them. So if you like kind of tart things like lemons, I think you'll love kumquats. Just thought I'd throw in a shot of this lily. Isn't it gorgeous? Lots more about to open there, but I just love that deep orange red color and that slight lighter orange in the center. And look in my little flower corner here. I planted a tangerine tree in this pot because I think it will do better in this type of sun than what it was getting. It was in too much shade and it wasn't growing. And I can see it is already doing a lot better. There's new growth on it. And even a little fruit there. Do you see that? There's a couple more too hidden. So I'm pretty happy about that. The flowers are doing fine. And here's what I want to show you. The medlar tree. I've only had it two years. And look what I've got. I have some fruit forming. Pretty happy about that. There's about a dozen or more on here. And they look super healthy. And I just can't wait to try them in the fall. Medlars. So I guess they're pretty popular in the UK from what I've read. Uh, I've never seen anyone or heard of anyone here in the States that has one, but I like the tree leaves. The blossoms were big and white and now I have fruit all over it. I'm hoping it ripens through all the way. It's supposed to taste like cinnamon spice applesauce and I will definitely be sharing that on the channel in the fall. I'm excited to see what it looks like and tastes like at the time that I harvest it. Last but not least, I have blueberries everywhere. Just growing like crazy. And they go ripe really quickly, kind of like cherries do. So I have to keep my eye on them because also like cherries, the birds love blueberries. But not as much as me birds and I'm going to get most of them. <laughs> Well, I'll share with my kids. Pluots are ripening. Look at that one. I love pluots. I didn't discover them until a few years ago. They're a combination of plums and apricots, mostly plum, and they are so good. This tree is only three years old and it has probably 50 on it, so I'm really excited. Oh my gosh. Is that what I think it is? There was a bird nest in here. It's empty now. Wow. Yeah, there was definitely a bird nest in here. Aw, I have birds everywhere, but they picked a little tree to make a nest in this time. Oh yeah, there are a lot more than it looks like at first because the fruit is the color of the leaves until it ripens. I am definitely looking forward to eating those when they're ripe. If you haven't yet tried a pluot, 
you need to do so because you should definitely not miss out on a treat like this. And here is my little baby wonderful pomegranate tree and it has had uh, several blossoms. Some have already fallen off and been pollinated and it has some baby pomegranates on it. So I'm looking forward to seeing if they come to fruition. So thanks for joining me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I encourage you, go plant some fruit trees yourself this year. If it is uh, the dormant season for trees in your area, like, hey, Martin, you in Australia, then plant some bare root fruit trees now. And if it is spring in your area like it is here, go ahead and treat yourself to a potted fruit tree, a pomegranate or say a tangerine or a lemon and get it in the ground or in a big pot and grow yourself some fruit because it is one of the sweetest gifts there is that you can give yourself and others. And remember, you can create the life you want, and the garden and orchard too, whatever that might be. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Right, Toffee? You know, Toffee, we really need to get you sheared. You are looking mighty fat there, and I know you're really skinny under all that wool. How about we shear you next week? Would that be a good idea? What do you think of that? Yeah, you don't like it, do you? But you will love it once I get the wool off of you. He's like, just bring me some grain. That's all I want. Go get me some grain. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>